Hello, friends. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Another Saturday, another live conversation with you guys. So excited. Today's topic is going to be really fun, really highly requested. So many of you jumped in and uh, let me know on the poll here on the YouTube community tab on my channel and over on Instagram as well, what topic you'd like to hear me talk about for us all to chat about as we go. So I was really happy for you guys' feedback. Just made myself a cup of tea. Let me know if you can see and hear me okay. And let me know where you're watching from. I love to hear from you guys. Can't believe it. We're already well into December. How crazy is that, you guys? Doesn't time, especially this time of year, there almost seems to be this acceleration in some ways. And I keep trying to remind myself to center and ground and just enjoy each little moment. I know a lot of us, uh, for many of us, this time of year can be busy and there's lots of responsibilities and lots of visiting and things we have to do. And it can be easy to let the time sort of slip away from us. And it can be a wonderful time to pull back and whew, take a breath and realize, you know, and I'm going to just enjoy this moment. Enjoy this moment of the season. I still have not finished my Christmas shopping either, Hannah. So you, you are not alone there. <laughs> oh, goodness. I, I'm not a very time-oriented person. I, I do try to um, make lists for certain things. But when it comes to holidays rushing up on me, uh, that uh, is, has always been um, an issue. <laughs> so you're not alone at all. Where are you guys um, watching from? Let me know in the comments. Oh, you're watching from the Philippines. One of you guys said, that's awesome. Very cool. Sounds like it's probably nice and warm there, I bet. I'm doing great, you guys. Thank you for asking. Ohio. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Amy. So great to see you guys. New York. So cool. I love connecting with you guys and just seeing where you're watching from. I hope you made yourself a cup of tea. So we talked about, I asked you guys, would you like to hear about living in the present moment and how to be present, how to be here? Because let's face it, a lot of us, we struggle and we need to have those reminders. And then I asked you guys um, if you'd like to talk about comparison, letting go of comparison and embracing compassion instead. And it was very close, but a lot of you said you wanted to talk about how can we let go of comparison and embrace compassion for ourselves and then share that with others. So we're going to talk about that today, but if you voted for the other topic, we will be covering that. We're going to be unpacking some present living concepts in the coming week, probably. Probably next Saturday. Probably next Saturday. Hey, you guys from New York, Costa Rica. That's so cool. So, so cool. So I've been working on a couple projects that I just want to let you guys know about. Some of you have heard me talk about. I have an ebook coming out that kind of covers everything we're talking about in these discussions. I also have a course that's going to be coming out. It's about wellness for writers and creatives. So if you're a writer or creative, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Take a moment to click the subscribe button or follow me on any of my other social media platforms. I really only use Instagram and Facebook when I can. <laughs> that way you won't miss it when they come out. I'm hoping to have them done and wrapped up before the new year so we can start our new year mindfully. I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you guys and having something more substantial to share with you. So many of you have been on this channel for a long time and I've wanted to put together something comprehensive and that is it. This ebook and the course work wonderfully in tandem and it's, it's kind of what I've always wanted to give you guys. So I'm excited about it. So make sure you're signed up so you see those updates when I'm ready to release the book and the course at the, it's going to be probably the end of the month, beginning of next year. Somewhere in that time frame, I'm, I'm working really hard to have it done before the year is out. So here's helping, right? So 
comparison. That's something I think, and you can let me know, let me know if this is something that you feel too. I think as creatives and as writers, we can often almost subconsciously compare ourselves to others, whether it's to other creatives, other creators, or other writers, or published authors, or people who seem like they're 10 steps ahead of us. And maybe we're on social media looking at them or scrolling through our feed, <laughs> like we do sometimes. And we find ourselves almost subconsciously comparing. Tell me if you can relate to this. <clears throat> you're having a great morning. You're having a great day. Maybe you've had a writing session. You're happy with it. And then you start going through social media and you notice some stuff from some other authors and other writers that you follow. And they wrote maybe 2,000 more words than you did today. And they've already got several books published. And uh, maybe you're still working on your first book. And um, they someone's won an award for their book. And you're like, wow, you know, I can't see myself ever doing that. And then suddenly you are feeling less good than you were <laughs> before you sat down and started looking at your feed. How many of you guys can relate to that? Because I know I can. I know in the past I have been in a great mood and then I'll notice something online or maybe even an article or a video of a writer or an author or a creative or a person <laughs> who is seems to be where I want to be. And rather than just acknowledging, wow, that's great, way to go them, I, I start almost subconsciously comparing where I am to where this other person that I've probably never met, perhaps never will meet or even communicate with, I start comparing myself to them. And now suddenly I don't feel as great about my own progress. The, the good feelings that I had before are now dimmed a little bit because now I've removed myself from being a participant in my own life. And I've sat down in this judgment seat where I'm now analyzing this person online or maybe in real life and myself. And now I'm looking at, I'm putting them on the scales and seeing how I measure up to someone else. So it's really almost this disembodied feeling of stepping back from your own life, from your experience of this life and taking the seat of the judge and seeing how your life your work, your writing, your creative project, your path, how it measures up to someone else's. Someone else's work, someone else's life, someone else's path. Now, in order to do this, we have to have a pretty good feel for what is the supreme perfect way to live. <laughs> because otherwise we wouldn't be able to make that judgment. So even if you're looking at someone, let's say their, uh, you know, their pictures on Instagram of their holding up their best-selling book <laughs> in, the, uh, in the Bahamas on a beach sipping coconut water out of a coconut. And if you feel a twinge of like jealousy or I wish I had that and I don't know if I'll ever be there and I'm comparing my life doesn't seem as great now compared to that spectacular imagery. We are deciding that we know what the perfect life looks like. We are creating this benchmark of what this perfection looks like and deciding that person makes the cut, but we don't. We're deciding that we know what's best for our lives. We're in control. We're the judge. So really comparison, and I've heard this advice so much of like, you know, you just have to stop comparing yourself to others. 
how many of you guys have heard that helpful piece of advice? And, and intellectually, we can say, yes, you know, I do. I need to stop comparing myself to other people. I need to stop comparing my work to other people's work. I can intellectually understand that that's not healthy. I can intellectually see that, yeah, that that makes sense. I shouldn't I shouldn't do that. But yet, when <laughs> we're when we encounter it in our lives, it's still it's still right there. <laughs> that twinge of like, ah, oh, my thing's not that great. Look at that person. They're doing so much. They have like all these books published and they have awards and they have this many people following them. And you know, they're going on book tours, and here I am, little old me doing this, and I can't. I can't make that cut that I see in my mind of being that level of good. This feeling of smallness that can come over us when it's it's like a split second reaction and it can be hard to even recognize it consciously or stop doing it. So this advice of um, stop comparing yourself to others, it suddenly becomes not that helpful. <laughs> So how do how how can we go? The what I kept asking myself as I was going through these ideas, thinking about what I wanted to bring to today's discussion, I thought, you know, it has to go beyond that. It has to go beyond just telling yourself not to compare. We need to recognize what we're doing to ourselves when we compare ourselves to anyone else. What are we becoming? What are we actually doing? Don't even think about the other people. Think about what is this doing to me? What is what am I actually doing in my mind? And what we're doing is we are removing ourselves from our lives and taking a seat of judgment over ourselves and over other people as well. And it's interesting to acknowledge that because we don't really think of that, do we? When we're when we're in the in the pla- this place of comparing ourselves or evaluating ourselves, we don't really think of it as harsh self judgment. But that's exactly what it is. We're we're judging ourselves and we're deciding that we know what's best. We can deem others like, yep, that's that's a, a great way to have your path unfold that's a great life and then then this over here is like not so great and and then you see where you fall somewhere on that scale so the whole thing (laughs) the whole process when we when we kind of peel back these layers and become conscious of what are we actually what is this mental process that's sort of running in the background (laughs) that's what it is is we're we're judging ourselves on this scale. Where do we fall on the scale? Do we do we reach that benchmark that we've established for ourselves? We so often compare our work to other people's work. As writers, I know that that's something Abby and I have been messaged about many times, emailed about many times. You guys have asked us so many questions about how do I stop comparing my work to someone else's work? How do I stop this comparison cycle that I can't seem to step out of? And I think from a practical standpoint, one of the most practical steps is to notice what is triggering these thoughts? What is triggering? What's the first thing that makes that cycle go off? Like I mean, that first domino <laughs> that knocks down the rest. And I know a lot of the things I just mentioned are about being online. So if you find that, you know, hey, every time I go to this, this certain person's social media account, I start looking at their stuff, I, I fall right away into self-deprecating thoughts. And I don't feel joy for them. And I don't feel joy about myself. Then stop looking at that. Remove from your life. If you notice that there's any unhealthy triggers of like, I just start scrolling through my feed and I start comparing my work to other people's. I start comparing myself and my progress to someone else's. 
maybe take a break from those apps or whatever it is, whatever it is you're using that immediately starts creating these negative thoughts and replace it with something else, something that's going to positively reinforce what you know to be true about you. And if you're thinking, well, I don't really know what I know to be true about myself and my career and my work, start with positive affirmations. Start with filling your mind with positive words and thoughts about who you are and what you're creating. The fact that you are a creator, you're here for a wonderful, love-filled reason. You're creating something from the heart with passion, with love, with grace, and it means something. It means something to you and it's going to mean something to the world. And that your story matters and that your life matters and that there is something divine in all of this. There's meaning and, and there's purpose to your life. Find some good I am affirmations and just play them in your house. Listen to them through your earbuds. Listen to them in the car. Just let them play. Let it soak into your soul. And there's there's many different ones you can find on YouTube. So you just look up some I am affirmations for a positive day. I am affirmations for a happy life, whatever, whatever you need. And just find, find some positive affirmations that are going to fill your subconscious. Even if you're not like sitting there intensively listening to it, maybe you're cleaning your house. Play it in the background and just let those words stir your soul and remind you, hey, you know, I'm a wonderful human being. <laughs> I'm here for a reason. I have a light within me that is meant to shine and I'm meant to give that light to others. You know, so often um, I will literally just stand in front of the mirror and say, I love you. And if you've never tried that, maybe you want to. Maybe, maybe it's something you want to try because it may seem simple and maybe to some of you it even sounds cheesy, but you know, we all need a little bit of cheesy in our lives. <laughs> we really do. Um, why is it so easy to be self-deprecating, but yet so hard to praise ourselves? To look at ourselves in the mirror and say, you are beautiful, you are powerful, I love you. Why is it harder sometimes to say that than to say, oh, you know, I'm so dumb, I'm so forgetful, I'm so lazy, whatever, whatever you're filling in that blank with. Or I'm not as good as, I'll never be as successful as, you know what you fill those blanks in with. You know what you fill those blanks in with. I'm just reading some of your comments over here. Yes, unfollowing. Unfollowing can be something very important sometimes, can't it? Because when you find that you are getting into toxic thought loops of talking down to yourself, putting out, dampening your own spirit, putting out your own light, because you're comparing your unique journey to someone else's unique journey, that is a good step to take to remove yourself from these things that are triggering negative thoughts. If there's nothing beneficial happening there, then why be part of it? You know, it's as, it's as simple as that. We want to fill our 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 time and our space and our attention with things that are going to build us up, to move us forward in our own journeys. And if we find something is causing pain and negative thoughts and, and just nothing good is growing out of that, there's no growth there, then we can, we can step back and we can release those things. We can let those things go and we can embrace something else. We can let it. We can allow ourselves to grow and move forward. And you know, I've often heard this expression, and it is a cool expression. So don't get me wrong here. 
but like um, it goes something like don't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 20. <clears throat> and the sentiment behind that being, you know, don't look at someone who's way farther down the road from you career wise or whatever. And they had to work hard to, to get there. And, and that's true in a practical sense, but what I, I think it needs to go even farther than that. Don't compare chapter one of your book to someone else's chapter one of their book. Do you know what I mean? Your book is totally different than their book. You're not even in the same book. It's not that you're on chapter one and they're on chapter 20. You're not even in the same book. We are, we're all writing our own stories. Our stories are unfolding uniquely just for us. And theirs is unfolding uniquely for, for them. You know what I mean? So a lot of you guys are writers, so you're probably trekking with me on this uh, analogy. But it'd be like taking a fantasy book and comparing it to a contemporary and saying, well, this one's better than that one. Well, it's like, bro, the genres aren't even the same. <laughs> They're totally different books. How can we compare this totally different genre and totally different story and totally different vibe to this completely different thing. You would probably come to the conclusion that they're both good. They're both good. <laughs> they're both great in different ways, in completely different ways because they're completely different books and completely different stories unfolding in different ways. Different book on a different shelf and someone else's house. <laughs> yes. 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 So true. Mm, Caitlin talking about unfollowing other influencers. And... Yep. Finding things that are negative and draining you. It's very important to, to release those things. And, and we can, we can look at it that way. Genuinely, not like we're running away from them or we're deleting things in a mean way. There's no, there's no um, negative spirit that we're coming at this from. We're coming at this from a place of compassion towards ourselves and towards others, because we're being compassionate to ourselves by not judging and comparing ourselves and holding up our lives under this microscope. And we're also being compassionate to others because if we can't be if there's nothing we can give and there's nothing we can really contribute to those people that we're comparing ourselves with, and maybe we're not even having good thoughts when we look at their stuff, maybe it's negative thoughts. We don't really feel joy for what they're doing. Then we're not adding anything to them either. So it's compassion for us. It's compassion for them. It's letting go so that you can receive something new something better that's going to serve you in a better way. Realizing I don't, I'm a whole different story over here. I don't need to compare my story. It's totally unique. And so it's impossible. It's not just that I shouldn't compare my life to someone else's. It's that it's impossible to even make a comparison. To think that I can is foolishness. You know what I mean? So it's, it's not even, oh, let's try not to do this because um, it's not good, even though, you know, I can clearly see that this is better than that. No, we, we can't make those comparisons because it's impossible for us to compare our lives to someone else's. Two different books in different people's houses <laughs> on different shelves. That's so true. It's so, so true. Yes, Hannah, I love that. The the book analogy. You want to put a Stephen King book next to a why book. Be like, oh, he told the story better. Yep, exactly. Two different things. I agree, Selena. It's a trap that you constantly go through. Yes. And so so the the thing I always come back to for myself is to just step back, to slow way down and to step back and notice when that happens. Like, oh, there, there's that thought. 
I'm comparing myself, I'm comparing my life or work to someone else. And then I immediately, whatever that thing is, if I'm looking at an article online, if I'm scrolling through a feed, which I don't really do anymore and haven't for some time, but I used to a lot. And when that would happen, I would get away from that thing, let go of that thing. That like tight feeling you start to feel in your chest is literally like your your energy like is starting to hang on to stuff. We're like, oh, we're going to hang on to this negative thought now. We're going to think about it all day. <laughs> it's just going to replay in our heads that we're not good enough and that we're not doing enough and that that person is doing such a great job with their lives and we'll never be able to be that good. What, where is the positivity in that? Where is the light in that? You know, there, there's nothing good. There's nothing edifying about um, creating these negative movies that we play in our heads all day over and over again. So as soon as you catch yourself starting to go down that path, we can step back and we can be like, well, you know what? <laughs> I just recognized that that little twinge inside me. I don't feel right about this. I feel like I'm comparing myself to someone else. If I'm on a social media website, it's making me feel that way. I'm going to get off it. If it's apps or notifications coming through my phone, I'm going to shut them off. If it's a friend group that I'm hanging out with over and over again because I feel like I need to, maybe I'm going to take a break from that. I'm going to recenter. I'm going to find my own footing. I'm going to reground within myself and ask some questions. Who am I? What makes me who I am? I am love. I am loved. I am sacred. I am valued. I am worthy just as I am. And what I'm doing matters. What I'm creating matters. And even if you feel like you're just saying these, you're repeating these things to yourself and they don't necessarily have huge meaning right away, just keep saying them. Keep exercising those mental muscles. We're creating new habits in our minds. Just like when something triggers that negative thought and then all those other familiar negative thoughts follow. We can create that same thing from a positive thought when we start with, you know what? Every time that happens, now I'm going to go right into positive thinking. I'm going to go right into reinforcing who I know I am as a sacred creator I'm going to start telling myself the truth about me rather than believing this lie that I can even can begin to compare my life and my unique path to someone else's. I'm going to reinforce with my spirit that I am loved. I am sacred. I am here for a reason. I don't need to compare myself to anyone else because there is no one else like me. And there is no one else who can write what I am writing, the way I'm writing it. And my path is unfolding exactly as it should be, divinely as it should be. And I am exactly where I am supposed to be. Maybe make a little journal um, entry or like a little list that you could Put on your mirror in your bathroom or your bedroom or on your fridge. And when you see it, you can remind yourself of these things. Even if you're just, you know, whispering them under your breath, letting that soak into your soul. And eventually you'll find, wow, it's becoming easier and easier for me to say these things and to feel them resonating inside of me. Because for so long, we've told ourselves lies. We've told ourselves that we're not good enough or that we're not smart enough or that we're not capable enough. But we can, just as those bad habits formed, we can slowly but surely, returning to this day by day, create new habits. We can create new habits that will serve us in a positive way. But I wanted to read you guys something that came to me this morning um, while I was having my morning coffee, actually. I was sitting outside and <clears throat> listening to the birds and thinking about this discussion and what we would share together today. And this came to me. 
this, this thought about comparison. So I'm going to read you this short piece that I wrote. Comparison is putting yourself in the seat of the judge. It is a stubborn, obstinate declaration that you know best what is right and wrong for your life. You are the final authority and you can decide whether or not you measure up to the plan that you have created, the path you have paved. Like a manufacturer, we will review all the prototypes and give them a try, take our notes and pick the best one while trying our utmost to discard the others. We watch our lives like a movie, looking for scenes to cut, like a product made by a machine. And if only it were just a little more like this, we long to tweak and change and edit. We decide that they are better and that we should be more like them. We judge them and we judge ourselves for that is what comparison is. We can only compare this to that when we feel that we thoroughly know what that should look like. When we take the crown and declare ourselves kings and queens over how things should be and decree that we know best. When we are lost in comparison, we are like a ship being tossed on a stormy sea. We can't see over the angry, crashing waves to the truth at the core of the matter that we have already been deemed divine, that we are not the deciders of whether or not we are worth something. We are priceless. We are worthy. We are loved. And we are love. We are intruders in the judgment seat, looking at our lives through microscopes, we were never meant to sit here. We were never meant to be the givers of judgment, but the receivers of compassion. We are the recipients of a love so divine that if we even tasted the merest hint of it, we would spend our lives searching it out with no time or care for comparison, with no thought to whether or not we measure up to that benchmark we created we would leave that line in the sand behind, let the waves slowly wash it away, and we would wade deeper into the unexplored ocean stretched before us, an ocean of love, compassion, and grace for all that we are and all that we can manifest. Those are some thoughts that I jotted down this morning while I was having my morning quiet time. And that just came to me in this flow and I wanted to share it with you. It was something I wrote rather quickly and um, I, I felt moved by it. And so I wanted to share it with all of you. But I hope that if you walk away today with nothing else, I hope you walk away with just this feeling of I don't need to compare my life to someone else's because I can't. My life is unique. My journey is divine and sacred. And I am loved. And I am love. Thank you guys so much for your kind words. I'm so glad that it could be something positive for you. I, I really love getting together to share, to share these talks um, live especially since lately, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't had as much filming time uh, to, to film like pre-recorded videos just because I've been working so hard on this ebook and the course. It's really taken up a lot of my time, but I'm excited about sharing it with all of you. And I think it will be really worth this extra time that I'm spending on it. But I also miss doing um, more videos, which will be coming soon. But these lives have given me a great opportunity to still be able to get together with you guys each week um, and chat live, you know, because uh, that way I don't have to like, I don't have to edit and film and do all these other things. I can just be here now with you guys in the present moment, reading your comments and, and seeing all of you here really encourages me and it gets me so stoked up. I was in like so high energy after we have these discussions. I'm so glad that you guys liked that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad that these lives are serving you guys. 
Thanks so much. You guys, you're all awesome. I hope that you all are having a wonderful week. And for those of you who are heading into like the holiday season, doing holiday stuff, I, I hope that you are having a wonderful season. Make sure you slow down and enjoy every moment of it um, and, and be fully present. Thank you guys for taking the time to be here with me. It means so much. I don't ever take that for granted. You guys who, who hop on and sit here with me and chat for like a half hour to an hour sometimes, I can't even tell you how much that means to me. I, I love you all so, so much. And you guys mean the world. You make me so happy and you encourage me in so many ways. I, I, I send you so much love, so much light. And may each one of you know how special, how valuable, how loved you are how sacred you are and that your journey is divine it's, it matters it matters so so much you all matter to me so thank you for being here and i will see you guys next week okay have an awesome week thank you for being here and i wish you so much joy in your journey namaste friends see you soon